Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of the Atheist Experience Live. I'm Matt Delaney. Joining this week was Jeff D, but you can see that it's Jen. Uh, we think Jeff may be stuck in traffic, and Jen was here and jumped in, so thank you. Uh, this is a live public access television sp program sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin. You can find out more about the ACA at www.atheist-community.org. We are live. It's been like, I don't know, six or seven weeks since I've had the chance to do a show. There's been studio cancellations, and I had two conventions to go to, and so I'm good to, glad to be back, even if I'm a little under the weather this weekend. If you don't, uh, by the way, this is a live call-in show. We'll have the number up for you shortly, and actually our lines are already full, and we'll probably get to those really quick, but if you don't get through on the phone today or you don't want to get through on the phone, you can email tv at atheist-community.org. That goes to myself, the other co-hosts, and some of the people behind the scenes as well. We cannot answer every email that comes in, but we do read them all, and we definitely will try. There's also a Frequently Asked Questions page at the ACA website. And in addition to this program, the ACA also sponsors a weekly uh, podcast called The Nonprofits. That's P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. You can go to nonprofitsradio.com for more information. We were supposed to be live but uh, yesterday, but I had a, a medical emergency, and so we canceled the show. Um, I'm doing well right now, just a little hazy from the drugs. Yeah. Are you hazy from drugs? I'm not hazy from Good. drugs. Then at least one of us will be sane by the time we get to calls. Um, lastly, uh, yeah, that was it. Okay. Lastly, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for jumping over here real no quick. No problem. You know what? Right before this, I was reading something that I think you'll find totally awesome. Okay. You know this prayer rally that our illustrious governor is mm -hmm. slated to host in August? I just found out that the Westboro Baptist Church is going to take a break from their usual protests of, of funerals and, and other pickets to come down to Houston and protest this um, fake prayer political rally. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, so, the, so Westboro is going to picket Perry. Who's in bed with the American uh, Family Association yeah. and the recognized hate group. Yes. So. So I mean, you know, it's like dueling hate groups. I know, it's awesome. Can we get banjos and go down there and sit out and play? All right, uh, let's not wait around a whole bunch here. We got Terry and Amherst, how are you? Hello, Terry? Hello? Hello. Is this Terry? Yes. How are you? I'm okay. Yeah. Um, I have an argument, against, uh, an argument for the existence of God. Uh huh. That okay. I think is original. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so you know that um, the Big Bang theory, uh, from the Big Bang theory, um, there, you know, the scientists n cannot say anything um, when it comes to Planck time. Right. There's, right. a, there's a limit as to how far the mathematics will work when approaching the event horizon. Right. So, oh, that's not the right at, the, at the Planck time, we are dealing with a, um, um, we are dealing with a position where no, the laws of physics, laws of logic, and laws of any kind of common sense doesn't work anymore. There's laws of common sense. I well, I'll, I'll let you keep okay. going. I'm not quite. Well, okay. So that means that laws of you know the law of non-contradiction, the law of and Are you talking all about, that. You're, thing you're talking don't about the logic anymore. You're talking about the logical absolutes. No, I don't accept that. That's true. In, in, in between the the you know prior to the to the Planck time, you know, of course, it t time may be irrelevant and everything else. But yeah. I do not agree that the laws of logic, or the logical absolutes um, of identity, non-contradiction, excluded middle. I don't believe that those stop. Well, okay, but I think we can make an argument that. It may not just because it's so. No, they're they're absolutes by definition. They're 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 correct at all times and all places and all possible universes. So I don't know what right. argument you can make that they broke down or why it's relevant. 
Because if they broke down, then all of a sudden you have to stop talking. You can't say anything about that, period. Well, I'm just saying that the law, the common, the common sense argument that says that withdrawal from relief is the default position no longer applies there. I, I, Why would that be relevant now? Um, because, well, let me just make the argument. Okay, okay. Be good. Okay. So, whatever it is at the, uh, the first blank time of the universe, um, there may or may not be a cause to that situation of the universe. And the situation of the universe, you know, there may be causes, may, there may not be causes, but whatever the case, you know, the cause you can make up, let's say, you know, for example, you can say that the cause is God, for example. Why? Well, for example, you can, you know, Sure, I can say anything. That's possibility that, yeah, you can say maybe, I don't know, you can say like the cause of that situation of the universe is a, I don't know, is red or is, is small or is, you know, whatever. And some if you, of these... If you can substitute any word yeah. in there and they all make similar sense... Yeah. then that's an admission that you're not going to be able to get to your, your point about proving it's God, because we have to have a way to distinguish well, between the different options. That, I'm saying that um, multiple, you know, for any, old, any one of them, you can no longer say that it's more likely that it is not than it is. No, that's not okay. true. Because by default naturalistic explanations are always going to be more pl plausible than supernatural explanations because we have examples and evidence of naturalistic explanations and no confirmed accounts of supernatural explanations. So if you're wanting to posit a first cause, and by the way, the only thing new about the argument is the way you're, you're putting it together because this is essentially like the cosmological argument. Um, but if, well. you're, if you're going to posit a supernatural thing, you have already made a claim that is necessarily less plausible no, than I'm, naturalistic claims. Well, I'm saying that any cause is any cause is not necessarily unplausible. Yeah, yeah no, no, that's absolutely some... absurd. I didn't cause it. It's, you, abs well, it's absurd. Yeah, you to, could. Yes, you could. I, mean, I, I could, no. I Maybe, could cause the Big Bang? I mean, you could have, I mean, the sentence that you caused that situation in the universe is just as plausible to be true than it is to be false. No. No, it isn't. I didn't exist then. I didn't exist until around 1969 or so. So it's not just as plausible that I created the Big Bang. No, I'm just saying that any, any sentence you, you make about the cause of that situation or anything about that situation rather is is um, not necessarily unplausible because the common sense laws break down. Well, I completely that, disagree yeah, and I think that that's no absolutely absurd. I, I think you're playing around in an area where we don't understand much and then trying to claim that our, that our lack of understanding makes all things equally plausible, and that's simply not true. Well, that's, that I agree. Well, actually... Um, I, I just contradicted <laughs> you, and now you agree. So, okay. Well, I'm saying that... Um, I'm, well, anyway, I actually don't believe this stuff. Well, okay, stop. So I guess I'm just stop. This is a stop. 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 Terry, stop. You need to, if you're going to come up with an argument that you think is original, you need to get it in a better format and get it more put together before you bother calling in. 
But please don't call in with arguments that you don't believe because you're, it's unlikely that you're going to be able to defend those arguments very well if you don't already believe it. I've got all four lines full and some of them I'm contain sorry. callers and some of them contain callers that actually believe the stuff they're about to spew. So why do we have to waste time on fakery? I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, yeah. thanks. Bye bye. See me. All right. Don't we, we don't need anybody pretending anything yeah. or playing devil's advocate and making arguments to, uh, to, to, uh, to you know for things that they don't actually believe for things that they don't accept. There are plenty of people who are more than happy to call in and probably waiting uh, to tell us what it is they believe and why. And you know not everybody who calls in is a theist or anything else. So you know if, if you're not going to be genuine uh, when you call in, you're just kind of wasting our time. And on that note, while we get ready to take the next call, I'd like to welcome Jeff D to the show. Hi, folks. Yay. Sorry I'm late. It's That's my fault. But I need to get your new cell phone number. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I have been I'm, able to tell you what was going on. Uh, I, th I thought you had it, but I'll get it to you. Yeah, um, now is not the time. <laughs> we got Chase and Norman. How are you? Hey, I'm pretty good, guys. Big fan. But to finally actually get through... Cool. Welcome to the show. What's your question? Um, I was just to ask you guys if you think the Christians are kind of like the Borg. Like the Borg? Like my yeah. T-shirt? <laughs> well, no, like from you know Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he has a T-shirt. Yes, I have a Borg T-shirt yes. on. What a what a timely call. <laughs> uh, I'd say no. No, they're not. I don't see them forcing. I mean, not these days. Well, well it just depends where you are, though. Like we're all in the Bible Belt, but down here they're pretty ridiculous. There are there are certainly some who have extreme beliefs that you know, like non-Christians shouldn't be citizens and stuff like that. But that's not all of them. I, I'd say yeah. you, I'd say you'd find similarities, perhaps, in, the, in their desire. Um, although, you know, the Borg were looking for perfection and would pass over species that weren't going to add to that. Whereas I don't think Christians would pass over anybody because they're just looking for numbers. But if you're just looking at it as wanting to take over, I want reason to take over the world. What I care about, though, is the methods. I don't want to outlaw religion. I don't want to, you know, by force try to take away people's religious beliefs. And by and large, I don't see Christians acting by force to impose their beliefs because you really can't. You, you can't control what somebody truly believes or doesn't believe. Now, as far as what they're doing with regard to legislation and trying to force the world as a matter of law to be more consistent with their beliefs, they're definitely doing that. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know that it would be fair to say that they're just like the Borg. B besides, the, the Borg have those cool built-in, like, blaster things on their arms, and they have very powerful starships, yeah. which Christians have not got. So, uh, Well, my other question was that I was going to ask, because I'm personally agnostic, and I, I used to love mythology and all that. I still do, but I've noticed psychologically... It seems that their religion often justifies bad behavior. Mm -hmm. um, do a majority of them not see this or just not care? Um, in most cases, I think the things that we identify them doing as bad behavior, they think is good behavior. Their, their moral compass has been so polluted by the poison that is Christianity that they're unab unable to distinguish between what sort of actions are civilized and decent and which ones are grossly immoral. Now, it doesn't, I'm not equating them with you know, mass murderers or anything. I'm just saying that they have a different set, a different set of ideals as to what they should and shouldn't do um, and, and who should be following you. I mean, when, you're, when you're in the, the, the opinion that the, there's a God who not only loves you but has commanded you to do certain things and he's the author of morality so that whatever he tells you to do makes it right. There's all kinds of crazy stuff you'll do and you'll assume that it's right when those of us who don't accept the preconceptions that, that go into Christianity would immediately identify those actions as grossly immoral. 
I usually. That. We're not perfect either. True. No, I'm not the same I, just, I just don't understand how, even with their environment, their parents telling them this early, which happened to me, how they early on can't see this as, like you said, grossly um, grotesque. Now, there, there's a reason they call those the formative years, right? Yeah. I, mean, um, I, I actually, you know, my experience was I, I was raised in a uh, moderate Christian household, but it was really several years after I uh, decided that I didn't believe the, the, the stories and, the, and the, the supernatural elements of the religion that I started to become aware of just how twisted some of the teachings associated with it were. And I didn't immediately realize that because I, I had been raised with certain assumptions about what kinds of things had to be right and wrong. You know, it, it reminds me, I mean, I was, a, I was a Christian for more than 25 years and there are stories in the Bible, excuse me, that I read and took one particular understanding away from, you know, and then it wasn't until I managed to escape the, the shackles of Christianity that I could go back and look at those same stories and see them in a different light. And so when you see a story about, you know, um, God say, telling a bunch of people to go out and murder this other population um, in order to take their stuff and set up a new home, um, if you... If you're reading that with the belief that God is good and God is in charge and whatever God commands is necessarily good, then even if it seems kind of barbaric, there is ultimately some good thing that we're just simply too dense to be able to see, but God can recognize. But when you get out of that, those preconceptions and you begin to recognize the fact that uh, nothing, not even a God, transcends morality sufficiently that they can just manipulate and you know that their their dictum alone makes something good then you realize that yeah this was just a roving band of people who ran around slaughtering people in the name of their god right and they justified it to themselves by yeah. saying you know we serve this invisible friend who tells us what's right and wrong and he says what we did was right so screw yeah. you yeah i guess i guess that makes a lot of sense it, it takes it takes a lot of effort it takes yeah. a, a lot of effort to be able to break through that um, because I, it's so much more comforting to think that you're right all the time. Yeah. I think the thing that broke me out the most was uh, martial art specifically because I had a good influence in that sense to kind of lead me away from Christianity. Careful, you get the Christians up in arms against martial arts if you say stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot, Chase. I appreciate the call. Hey, thank you. Take care. I, I tried martial arts myself, but I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, deal with all the, the bowing and scraping, kow kowtowing to the flag of Korea yeah. happened to be the thing at the place I was going to. So did you have something you wanted to go over with? We can I have some stuff I can go over with, but we got a bunch of phone calls, so... Okay. Let's not well, interrupt we'll keep it. going with phone calls. Sure. Andrew in Bethlehem, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? Bethlehem, really? In PA. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, just a coincidence. Yeah. But I have a question. Um, you know, supposedly the Big Bang created space and time, but energy and mass cannot be created or destroyed. So I was wondering, how could energy and mass exist without space and time? You need to call a physicist show, first of all. Second of all, the basic laws of, you know, conservation of energy and everything may not necessarily have applied then. Um, but third, that the, the origin of the universe doesn't necessarily have to violate those things. Yeah, because I mean, that's, that's the question that always comes to mind when... I believe that the, God created the Big Bang. The, the total energy of the universe is zero. zero which means it does not there, there's no violation of the conservation of energy in the uh, in the uh, the the appearance of the universe so what makes you think god did the big bang well to me it's just illogical that energy mass could be without space and time i understand that 
I'm sorry, I, I didn't get that. What was that? Well, how, how can energy mass, it seems dependent on space and time. Uh, uh, you're, you're, there is a limit to the, to the, the, the depth of the science you're going to get out of us, but um, uh, you really should be talking to, to physicists. It, it seems more illogical than scientific. Uh, okay, it can seem that way to us, to us lay persons, but uh, the, do you, do, are you aware that the gr great majority of, of physicists are not Christians? Are not theists, I should say? I believe there's about 75 percent that aren't theists. And okay, this so, is so if it's so obvious, if this thing that seems obvious to you is so obvious, how come it's not obvious to those guys, the guys who well, actually the do the work? Huh? The more important question, why are 25 percent theists? That's the more important because it's, question. Because it's, it's easy to compartmentalize, but these other guys, that, that, you know, you... you, you well, here, the, there are more unbelievers amongst physicists than there are in the general public. Yeah, it's out, not, out of that's the people, not the, why there are still some is not the question. Why so many of them are not believers? That's the question. Yeah, out of the people who understand this subject the best, the overwhelming majority of them do not find it more reasonable that a god did it. And I'm still wanting to hear why you think it's more reasonable that a god did it when when what we're talking about is something that we don't understand and cannot even investigate. So therefore, there can't be evidence to support your position, and I wanted to know why you had it. Well, I, I just happen to be a, a theist because I'm a born-again Christian, and I, I had a so you're, firsthand you, experience with so, God. So, so you, have been, you, have, you, have a pre, you have a preconception or a, a presupposition that God exists, so you're trying to fit him into the science. Well, I'm not trying to fit him in. I'm just saying what? it's just equally credible than what physicists come up with, which to me seems illogical. Well, consider, <laughs> considering, math without space and time. considering that you don't seem to understand it, I don't know how you can claim it's illogical, but my, my point was you're not following the evidence, you're leading the evidence. You were already a believer in the Christian God, and now you've been convinced by evidence that the Big Bang is the best scientific model of the origins of the universe, and then you're trying to plug your God into the gaps that we, into the gap areas where we don't have complete answers yet. And well, to you, me, the gaps are facts. And, 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 what? To me, the, the gaps are facts. This is the God of the facts, because God fulfills all of the necessarily criteria that would that wouldn't account for a first cause. Well, well, no, he wouldn't, because to account for a thing, you can't just make up some other thing. You have to show that the thing that you're using to account for the open questions actually exists. I mean, you can make up you know, things to account for all kinds of stuff. But if you can't show that the thing that you made up actually exists, then you haven't really accounted for it. You've just, you've just made things up. Well, uh, God would subsist, not necessarily exist. Exist means what exists in space and time. God would be transcendent, so God would subsist. God would be a foundation. What evidence, for what what evidence do you have that anything like that could possibly exist? Well, for one thing, like, um, well, let's say science. Science relies on cause and effect. It, it, it has that assumption. Otherwise, we can, um, we can experiment. Because sure. when we experiment, Okay, so we what's, what's the experiment you did? What's the experiment you did that demonstrated that your God exists? Well, God fulfills all the necessary criteria. That, for, that's for not an cause. experiment. That's not an experiment. I could say, um, I could make up some creature that spews out these aluminum ACA uh, mugs, right, as part of its biological process, and I have now accounted for that mug, but if I can't show that the creature really exists, I'm just flapping my gums, and that's what you're doing when you, when you try to account for uh, things about the origin of the universe, which, by the way, the physicists who understand those things, m uh, for the most part, reject your God and don't agree with you, right? So we've got to keep reminding you of that. Um, but it, it, making up something and calling it your God and saying that is the thing that explains it doesn't really explain anything until you've shown that your God actually exists. Well, Can you? well, I mean, well, to claim that something exists, you would need to have criteria established that, that either meet up with your claim 
or do not meet up with the client. And as far as like God would be concerned, uh, God would be number one a reasonable entity. Okay, so I'm, I'm making up a criteria. I'm making up a criteria a for a thing that meets that, that meets my uh, that that fits my claim, and it's that creature that spews these these aluminum mugs. See what you're doing? At that that is not how it's done. You can't just say because I have a th an idea that that uh, that fits the that fits the uh, available information, that therefore my idea is automatically right. That's, well, not, how, that's not how that science works. Ideas. What? What? The very fact that we have ideas demonstrates the highest form of what exists, You're and that's, that would on be to... our reason. Dude. Like, the fact you... that we have ideas shows that we have thinking machines in our body. Yeah. Would you, would you mind please sticking on one subject and not like the moment we start pressing you on one of your claims, you jump to another one? You've already done that with, you know, the, the origin of the universe. Now you're doing it with this. Now have I been doing that? Yeah. Uh, well, I apologize. We, well, look, I, we have shown you that just making, just like saying this God idea you have, that answers the open questions in science, which it doesn't, by the way, because if it did, then most physicists would agree with it, and they don't, right? But... Um, We've shown you that's not how, that is not how it works. That's not how you prove a thing exists. Because I can make up any number of things that answer any number of, of open questions. What, what you need to do is show that the thing you're proposing actually exists. Can well, you God, or can't you? God would subsist, so it would be a foundation for existence. No, no. So what you would show, is that a no that or a yes? That, well, you would demonstrate that everything known would have a foundation. So suppose everything does have a foundation. How do you? How have you demonstrated that that foundation is your God? Well, what, what would you consider demonstration? Would a logical That's argument be? That's not my problem. I'm not the one. I'm not the one proposing your God, dude. You are. This is basic burden of proof. You say you think this thing exists. Great. It is your job now to demonstrate that it exists. Can you or can't you? Well, I would go, I would base my demonstration on a logical argument. Okay, yeah, but, okay, logic is a fine thing, and it works when, it, it, when you feed in facts, okay? And the problem is, you're just doing your logic in your brain, disconnected from reality. And you're thinking that, you know, if I have open question A, and I can imagine answer B, that therefore I've solved it, and answer B must be the truth. That doesn't work because you, you, you haven't shown that answer B is really the answer unless you can show that B really exists. There's, well, what if I said that Bigfoot created the universe? You would now, be in the same boat as you are now. Uh, no, that's wrong, because... Bigfoot would be a physical construct, whereas God no, would be I'm imagining, metaphysical. No, I'm imagining a cosmic Bigfoot. There. A cosmic Bigfoot. Sure. Well, th th it's the ground of all being, this Bigfoot. And this Bigfoot, would he, he would consist of factors that would exist in space and time, like a, a foot and a lar large foot. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, so no, that, you're being that would, too literal. You're being too literal. Being he has a, Bigfoot doesn't actually have feet. That's a common misconception. See, I can sit here all day making shit up. That is exactly what your religion is. It's a bunch of made-up stuff. Here's the bigger problem with what you're trying to do, is you're looking at a mystery. There's a point at which we cannot look any further when we're investigating the Big Bang. And we have not been able to come up with models and answers that provide us with all the information, and we never be, may never be able to. And so you're looking at that mystery and saying, hmm, I need to come up with some sort of explanation for this. Well, here's this God thing, which, by the way, it's a panacea. It's an explain-all. It has every characteristic you ever want it to have for whatever thing you're, you're, you're wanting to answer. And so you say, look, this meets all the criteria of this. Therefore, it's the most plausible answer. And that's just wrong. Because, number one, you're assuming that your understanding of the question and the mystery is correct and accurate. And it's clearly not. 
because we don't have a good enough understanding to posit what may or may not have been causes. There's multiverse theories. There's, there's a ton of different theories about uh, the origins of the universe. Well, the, second, the, second, the, second, the second thing is, if you posit an answer that is a panacea, you have explained nothing. Your God has no explanatory power because we explain things in terms of things that we understand. We explain things... Uh, the, the unknown with the known. You are trying to solve a mystery by appealing to a greater mystery. You have no evidence for it. You just went into it already believing this and said, how convenient, I have this belief, this, this claim about a being that would certainly answer every possible uh, criteria for the Big Bang, so therefore it makes it plausible. Sorry, that's not the way it works. Well, the evidence would be a logical argument. Like, the logical argument would be I define God, and God would be. Sure, you all can define good, God into existence. And all. Yes, define... and I've defined into existence a creature that spews little aluminum mugs. Defining a thing into existence doesn't make it exist. Well, well it would outline the criteria. The criteria fulfills the role. No, then, we're going okay, around in circles. no, because there's a bunch of, there's actually, and I wasn't supposed to tell you this, there's actually a, a, a collective of transcendent universe building fairies that actually meet all the criteria better because they're not, they're also not supernatural and they don't interact with us. So they are far less troublesome than your God hypothesis. Which well, how means, can you have more than which, a fairy? Which one, means, how can which, you have more than one fairy outside which, of space and time? How can you have anything outside of, how can you have anything outside of space and time? If, well, you, if you can well, define, that would be pure reason. Reason no, would be a non -entity. no, Andrew, is a hang thing on. That takes place in brain. If you can define a god to exist outside of space and time, why is it not also equally viable to to define something else outside of space and time? Well, because the one thing that could exist outside of space and time would be how, you're done. <laughs> if you're going to assert that the only because thing that exists, pleading, yeah, right. yeah, because it's special pleading. pleading. Ah, my, because my thing has been believed by a lot of people for a long time, and you just made up those pixies. <sighs> wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This is, oh, Evolved Atheist. <laughs> yeah, Evolved Atheist. How you doing? Just hang up on this guy. Hey, oh, are you, aren't you All right. tolerant Dude, of All right, what, hang on, uh, your hang calls, on, your hang calls on. are just hang on. and everybody Don't you want hang to on. Of, of other people's views? Hang on. I'm in a really pissy mood today because I spent Saturday in the ER. I haven't had a chance to catch up on the episodes that you've called into, and I'm willing to let you talk for a minute or so just so I can get my, my taste to. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, am, I on, am I on and everything? I heard just, I just heard some guy say, hang up on this guy. Yeah, that was me. You're on the on. air. <laughs> hang up are, on this are guy. Are you not watching the show? I'm, I'm sorry? Are you not watching the show? No, I'm not watching it. Why I'm not? I'm not even watching it. Why? Because I'm on a computer. I'm actually. Uh, yeah, you can the, watch it on the computer. Uh, I, I'm actually. Well, I know, but I'm watching the uh, Michael Jackson thing right now. Sure, go ahead. Get, get yeah, to but anyway, um, um, I've been um, monitored, sort of paying attention to some atheists and and um, and listen to their responses to to some of my claims, and it seemed like um, for some of them, their whole motivation of caring for atheism is because of uh, they feel that it would help gays. And it, it, it seemed like that's, not, that's their I, driving force behind even... I, so I don't know if they're driving force behind being an atheist, but it seemed like it's their driving force behind why they care for atheists. Okay. Well, that's not the case here. Can, and can we just set aside the, uh, the, the you know, that that criticism of your, um, the, the motives you imagine that atheists have and just deal with the arguments, please? Oh, well, actually, the argument is a lot of atheists are, uh, their, pr their primary motivation behind being interested in atheism is, is they, is they want to use atheism to fight for gays. That's what, my where, argument. Where's your evidence just asserting for this? this? Where's your I'm, evidence for this? I'm sorry? Where is your evidence for this claim? Well, you know what? There has been, I don't think there's been any studies on it yet, so it's sort of like a hypothesis. But one thing I, one thing I have uh, uh, noticed today. is when I mention I'm an atheist, right? And I'm, I'm, uh, I've been an atheist for a long, long time. I'm so much of an atheist to when I, I've, I'm, I move so far from religion, I can view things without connecting it to religion, for example, 
when I think of marriage, I don't think of religion. That, that's how far away I am from, from religion. What, what religion has done to the world, it hasn't had a psychological effect on me because I'm so far from it. But I believe that for, for an example, like some, some, some uh, pro-gay atheists have told me that there's no way that I can be an atheist if I oppose gay marriage. To me, well, that, they're wrong. They're that's wrong. a delusion. Yeah, they're wrong. There, there are people out there who believe that humanity was created by space aliens. They're called Raelians. They're atheists. They're complete morons, but they're atheists. There, Just no... being an atheist does not mean you're somehow, you know, uh, uh, on top of every issue. Yeah, I agree, but my, my, my point is that there are, being the fact that they can make a claim like, oh, in, 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 in order for you to oppose gay marriage, you, you cannot be an atheist, that tells me that their, their whole their whole purpose drive the whole motivation so what they care suppose it is wait a minute suppose it is so what oh so, so what? what no what it, it, you're, it are, what it are you are you, you know excuse what? me it, it, it's excuse just me. something uh, whoa, whoa. It, just something to observe. hang on you're on whoa hold. whoa just hang on a second i just want to know what difference does this make suppose they are okay um you've been calling our show and you've been and you've been uh, critical of the idea of gay marriage, or is it just being gay in general you're critical of? I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, so what? What the motives of people are that this? When I said, can we can we dispense with the personal attack on the motives that you think other atheists have and just deal with the arguments? I was not asking you to justify your attack on those atheists' motives. I was asking you to get off of that and back on the subject, okay? Okay, the, so, the, 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 uh, the, the subject is, uh, the only claim I'm making yeah. is, uh, this is the subject. The, the, the subject is as follows. Uh, I believe many atheists, they only care for atheism, where well, they mainly care for atheism, the, the primary driving force <sighs> behind why they care for atheists, atheism is because... Uh, they feel that they can use atheism to fight for gays. Okay, that so what? The, if, that is so, the so what if they do? Okay, so what if they do? Okay, yeah. let's 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 examine that for a minute. So what if they do? Now, 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 the primary uh, motivation behind why they care for atheism can cause some things to happen. Like, for example, it could cause uh, it can cause them. It can actually, it can, if there was a group of atheists who opposed gay marriage, it would most definitely be, be divisive among atheists because there's some atheists who only care about atheism because okay, oh, because, so there'd be so there'd be disagreements and we have so disagreements what? in the atheist group over all so sorts what? of things. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but there's a difference between simply disagreeing. You're unhappy. And start, you're right. unhappy because there are some atheists that disagree with you, and you strong think man, that's. And you strong, think strong man fallacy. One moment. All right, go ahead. But you're not happy. If, if you're perfectly okay with this, then then we're done, right? Because no, because no, because no, if it's I'm okay, okay it. it's just it's it, interesting to me. I'm, <laughs> nice strong man fallacy. No, you know, that's a nice strong man fallacy. What, what is this? I'm not what? unhappy. Please shut up. What is the straw man fallacy? We cannot keep having people talk over each other back and forth, or nothing gets said. Some atheists. I'm, I'm sorry. You I talked mean, all the way through that while I had your ass on hold. That. What? Hello? What is the straw man fallacy you're talking about? All right. All right. All right. Will you let me? Am I on right now so people can hear me? Because every time I try to answer you, I think I get cut yeah. off. I I can answer. You got 30 seconds. All Go. right, all right. This is the strongman fallacy. You told me I was unhappy because uh, I believe that a lot of uh, atheists' primary uh, motivation behind being interested in atheism is because they want to use atheism to fight for gays. I'm not unhappy because of that. I'm not. Un that's that's not make me unhappy. I find it interesting and intriguing, and I think it's uh, it deserves to be examined. Okay, so you're okay with it. Yeah, I, I find it interesting, okay. but I anything think else? it can, it can Have be... Have you got very, anything I else? It can be, uh, I think it can be divisive. Okay. You know what's divisive? You know, you know what? You know what? Here. <laughs> Atheism 
has absolutely nothing to do with any other question other than whether or not a God exists. Yes, there are some things that, some views that many atheists share, but there's no requirement that they necessarily share those. And so there are people within the ACA who, for example, are pro-choice, anti-choice, pro-gay marriage, anti-gay marriage, whatever. It doesn't matter. What the hell is your problem that you're calling about? I don't know why you're calling us. Okay. All right. Uh, because because okay, you talk, when, hang on, hang on, because you mentioned that some atheists have come down on you because you're opposed to gay marriage. I'm saying that those atheists who say that you're not an atheist for doing that are wrong. Um, what is your point? All right. My point is it could actually, some of these, some of these pro-gay atheists are so radical it would it would divide if 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 there was a a, a group of atheists who oppose gay marriage, the atheists who support the the pro gay uh, radical atheists uh, I'm talking about would start a major <laughs> they would start a major uh, fight. And why would that be bad? Why we would atheists, that be bad? I we mean, atheists fight amongst ourselves all the time about all kinds I mean, of various you know what, issues. Noah, put it put, Noah, put it this way: they they tried to boycott my atheist rap music because I oppose gay marriage. Now, and, okay, the they have every right to do that hey, if know, they yeah, disagree yeah, with okay, your views. Yeah, okay, you, yeah, you know, you know hang on, do you see hang people? on, hang on, you know what else happened? There's a group called Black Atheists of Atlanta who are a bunch of racist bigots who are uh, doing a bunch of gay bashing and other stuff on the YouTube channel, and I called them out for it. I'm not saying that they're not atheists. I'm saying that they're idiots. They're racist and they're bigots. Oh, so you called them uh, bigots because because you are intolerant of their views? I mean, isn't that the meaning of, of bigotry? Right. When, See, when you're intolerant is, of somebody else's, this is how it's no, somebody else's views? No, no, uh, I, I made a rational case that pointed out that the facts, quote unquote, that they were spewing were actually not facts. These guys are a know, bunch of... But I know, but but you call them. Uh, all right, what what facts were they spewing? What what facts? What so-called facts did they spew? I'm please, not reviewing their please. show. I don't want to direct people that way. Okay, I, I have a question. Is there anything I said that you think is 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 not a fact? Because I'll debate with you right now about it. I oppose. I oppose gay marriage. I'm I still want right to know. Now. I, I, I still would. You right I, now. I still would like to know why you oppose gay marriage. Because if you have a good, rational reason for it, you might be able right, to convince right. me. No, for, first of all, I think, I think gays should have all uh, the same rights as, uh, as, as, uh, as uh, everyone else. Cool, so they can get married. No. Why I not? You just, why be, why? you just said, I, I believe, you, <coughs> you're on hold. You just said you believe gays should have all the same rights that everybody else has, and that would include marriage. Why not? Actually, the word and identity is not a right. For example, I'm African American and and you're white right, and you're white. Do I have the right to be to uh, do a group of blacks have the right to be uh, labeled Caucasian if they're like darkening? Uh, you can call uh, yourself Michael what, Jordan. You can call yourself whatever you want. I don't know what the hell this has to okay, do with my, it. Okay, my my it's, do you think the government should should con, should consider? Uh, African Americans that's darkening Michael Jordan that has a DNA test that proves that they're African American. Uh -huh. Do you think the uh, uh, the government should whack it root to recognize them as Caucasian? May I? I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I Are think you, the government. Do, I think the government should not discriminate between white people or between people by the color of their skin. And how is that and, a different identity? Whoa! Slow down. All right. And I think the government should not discriminate between people on the basis of their sexual orientation. All right. All right. Those how, are the same as far as I'm concerned. All right. So when you say, when you was, ask me, hang on, when you ask me, do I think a black person should have the right to say that they're white, I'm, uh, uh, I think a gay person have, should have the right to say that they're straight, and a straight person should have the right to say that they're gay, and the government should stay the heck out of it. Okay. That's uh, what that, I think. That's the straw man fallacy, and I can tell you how you screwed the straw man fallacy. Do you know, do you know you the ready? name of any other fallacy? Uh, are you ready? Uh, well, you know what? If or the, hypothesis. If you screw the straw man I'm fallacy, then that's what I'm going to call you out on. If you screw another fallacy, I mentioned that one too, but this time you screw the, screw, the straw man fallacy. There I has said, not been I a straw... Said, do you think my... There has not been a straw man fallacy. Don't just toss it out there. You have to actually explain it. I'm wanting to know why you're opposed to gay marriage. 
Now, are you ready for me to explain it? I've been waiting for 20 all right, minutes. All right, here it is. All right, I specific, all right first of all, a straw man fallacy is when you dis dis distort <laughs> the person's claim question. and argue against a distorted version of the claim. Now, you argued against a distorted version of my claim because I, I specifically mentioned uh, what if the, is it, if the, is it right for the government to recognize uh, African Americans as being white. Now, 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 I'm talking about like a, a census. Get rid of like, if, if a person is black, right? Should a, should the government recognize them as being white, even though they're black? So the you government fact, shouldn't care. You, you in fact spew the straw man fallacy. No, he said the government shouldn't care. So you said the government. So, so okay. So how so how do you want to take a, a census then of? Uh, of the population. Okay, first of all, you cornered, aren't you? First, when I'm cornered? Yeah, because listen, shut listen, up. Listen, listen, I'm not cornered, you tool. You're trying to play games with definitions. There are specific dictionary definitions that relate to the lineage of some individuals, so that we end up putting them into these little boxes like Caucasian, African American, Hispanic, whatever. But those little boxes. People don't actually fit into those narrow little boxes, and your narrow little mind should be able to pick up on this eventually. Because the spectrum is a little broader with that, and it's really hard to fit people into different categories. And none of these labels have anything at all to do with the original question, which was about gay marriage. Now answer it or hang up. All right, what is the question? What is that Why question? are you opposed to gay marriage if you support equal rights for it, gays? It, I, I oppose... Uh, gays using the word uh, marriage. You're done. And uh, if I may respond to his attack on my last point, when I said the government should not care what color your skin is, I did not mean to say that if we were in a situation I don't mean to imply that if we're in a situation in this nation where people of a particular skin color need a special assistance because they have been crapped on for centuries, I, I do not mean to say the government can't then notice and try to uh, and try to fix that problem because un, because that's an that's a uh, an imbalance that already exists and the government is recognizing the 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 um, the problem in order to fix it. The same thing goes with gay marriage. There is a problem now. The problem is that straight and gay people are not being treated equally. Then, of course, the government can recognize they're not being treated equally and take steps to fix it. Told you that guy. It was going to be a waste of oh, time. Oh, I know, but I hadn't, had, hadn't dealt with him yet, so now I won't have to. The thing, the thing is here, um, I'm not aware of any good secular arguments against gay marriage that couldn't, wouldn't also apply to, for example, interracial marriages. Um, uh, re really what I find people objecting to is just their, their personal opinions or their disgust. But this playing games with the wording of you don't think that gay people should be able to get quote unquote married um, because there's, there's some existent uh, definition of marriage that doesn't include them, too damn bad. Uh, it's, you know, you, you don't create, you, you don't dissolve all of marriage and then have everybody get schmarriage or yeah uh, you're gonna you're gonna stand union. in the way of equal rights for everyone can I finish uh, yeah sorry you don't <laughs> do that you don't get rid of one word and then reapply a new word with everybody or should we name take everybody whose name is currently Jeff and force them to change their name to Sarah and do all the documentation and paperwork that it's much simpler and much more cost effective to grant the equal rights to everybody, as it should be by the Constitution, than it is to say, well, this one group has had this marriage label for a long time all to themselves, so now we're going to disband that and create a new label that we can then fit everybody else underneath it. Right. No, because there's nothing intrinsic about marriage that means it has to apply to one man, one woman, any more than it has to apply to a white person or a black person, gay or straight. If you're you an idiot. If you want to stand in the way of equal rights for everyone on the basis of a, you know, a, 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 a definition of a word. It's the label. If it's, yeah, if that, if that is your sticking point, you're just an asshat. We're, we're going to create a whole new thing that's the exact same thing as marriage, but we're going to call it something else. Is that else. what he wants from yeah. his other calls? Oh, we're we're going to call it something what, else All right, so well, that we don't have to call it marriage. Let's move on. You tool. Christopher and Milton, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Good, thanks for waiting. 
Um, first of all, I just want to say I am a super big fan of yours and of Jeff's. Jeff, you're awesome. You're off the hook. Oh, thank Yay. you. I'm a, an atheist, and um, I was a Christian like you, Matt, for over 30 years, and uh, finally I came to my senses. Um, I make these YouTube videos, and I guess they're pretty gnarly. They, they don't give a lot of latitude to uh, religious people. But um, I've been noticing over the last year or so that uh, the Christians who respond to my videos are resorting to lower and lower level lies. I mean, it's amazing. You would think that people who believe in an omnipotent, all-knowing, all-seeing God would be terrified to lie. Ah, uh, but if they're lying for good, it's justified. Yeah, yeah see, that, that's, you know, that, I heard what you said earlier. It's right. like David Barton just the other day flat out lied, saying that the founders had already resolved the creation-evolution debate <laughs> and put it to bed uh, 80, 80, 70 some odd years before Darwin ever, ever published it. Right? Yeah. I mean, he's just an idiot for saying that. Well, I've got my own theory. I, I kind of... I, you know, I agree with you um, to a point, and then I also think that uh, there's some psychology going on here. Um, I believe these people are scared to death because I'm pretty sure they recognize or they're starting to recognize how untenable their position is, especially when I, you know, I have these little arguments, not, uh, you know, debates or whatever you want to call them on YouTube with a Christian. I'll, I'll get to the point where I'm cutting really close to the, you know, so close to the truth that they can't wiggle out of it. And at that point, they'll block me from their channel or from their video, and then they'll put their, their video on no comments, you know. And it seems to me like they're just terrified. Could be. And I think that the reason they're terrified is, you know, not only because they're starting to realize that their religion is a lie, but they're starting to realize what idiots they are, and they're having this enormous amount of cognitive dissonance. Well, you know, re remember, a lot of us were that kind of idiot at one point, and yep. um, so uh, you might before they before it gets to the point where they're where they're blocking you and and, and going away for good, you might want to just take a moment to commiserate with them and say, you know, I know how you feel. I was there too, and uh, the the day when you decide to drop all that nonsense, you're welcome over here in the atheist camp. Yeah, that's definitely true, and I I do intend to do that. Um, I just uh, I do anything to forward you know the uh, the idea of thinking. You know, my parents raised me to be able to think. Mm -hmm. They didn't force religion on me. They didn't you know deny religion. They just said it's out there. Um, wait until you're old enough to be able to think before you make a decision about it. And I you know I, I really appreciate that about my parents. And I kind of feel like that toward these these Christians and these religious people. Maybe I should just you know, give them a chance to, to do some thinking, but they need the they need to be able to break through this indoctrination that they've been, you know, brainwashed with. Yeah. I think that's why I make the videos. Well cool, keep it up. I tend to avoid anything in the comments section. I even I posted a couple of videos over the last few weeks and I don't even bother reading the comments on mine because I the as much as I enjoy the internet and the occasional anonymity uh I don't, I don't read the chat room that goes on with the show, because if I did, I'd ban 90% of the people in there all the time. Uh, it's a, it's yeah. a cesspool. Well, you're, you're a hero to, uh, to us atheists, and I'll tell you what, uh, your show's awesome, and uh, I listen to it every week. So. Cool. Well, thanks, man. You guys take care. Good luck. Thanks, Christopher. Sure. We've got Sam in Bloomington. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Good. I actually had a question about um, the legality of Alcoholics Anonymous. I have a friend who had an alcohol charge a little while back, and part of his uh, plea or whatever his punishment is he has to attend Alcoholics Anonymous. And he came home the other day, and he knows I'm an atheist. He's not an atheist, but he knows I'm, uh, I know about religious ideas and things like that. And he starts telling me, hey, Sam, I don't believe in God, but... At my Alcoholics Anonymous meetings, they're always throwing around God and talking about, uh, you know, believing in God and things like that. And I know that Alcoholics Anonymous kind of has their basis 
secular secularly in that they worship uh, or they bring up the idea of a higher power and not God. So I asked him about that, and he says, yeah, they talk about the higher power and their pamphlets and stuff, but it's all talking about God whenever we're at the meeting. So I'm wondering if that's even legal. Can I go to somebody about that? Yeah, he can talk to a lawyer. I know there's people who fought this before where they've claimed and the courts have agreed that Alcoholics Anonymous is primarily a religious organization or a religiously motivated one. And I don't think courts are any longer allowed to order people to go to AA. They can order treatment, but they have to they have to allow the opportunity to go to similar treatments like right. uh, secular sobriety and other other uh, groups like that. So he, he might want to talk to a lawyer about that. Okay. So like secular sobriety and things like that? Yeah, and it, the problem is is that we don't have those in every area. I mean, yeah, Alcoholics probably, Anonymous. Yeah, I'm in southern is, Indiana. You know, it's pretty red down here. Yeah, and Alcoholics Anonymous, is, you know, they're going to be everywhere. And, and they're not all terrible. Um, oh, yeah, I agree. It but, just, except, you know, you don't want to tell somebody to believe in God when that's not something that's on their mind. Well, I think their entire 12-step step program is a bunch of horse crap because oh, really? it begins. Uh, I think they're replacing one addiction with another. Um, when, when, you right. begin, when your 12 steps include admitting that you are powerless uh, over this, um, I think that's the worst possible thing you can do to somebody is, oh, to, is, is to, to, to convince them that they can't do this on their own and therefore oh, yeah. they must rely on some higher power and, uh, and the number of things that they have to do along through this 12-step program. Uh, it's not empowering. It's, it's victimizing, right. victimizing, and they're trading one addiction for a new one, and that is addicted to the, to the group, to the program. Um, oh, yeah, I completely, completely, uh, philosophically, it's wrong. But on the legal aspect, is there anything, I guess, the only thing we can do is ask around for other organizations? I, I know it's been fought before and won. Um, well, do you know where that is? or I, Not off the top of my head, no. All right, well, I'll send an email. Maybe I'll get the details later. Okay, Google is your friend. All right, thanks a lot. Sure, bye-bye. God, Brandon in Memphis, how are you? Sir. Yeah, um. Uh, I wanted to tell y'all that religion is sick. Okay, thank you. Sure. Hold up, I'm not done yet. All right, why I say that is because, you know, I became a Muslim, and, uh, you know, I accept that everything in it, whatever. But then I got a lot of Christian family, and I got a lot of friends and family that's also Muslims, but they don't actually follow it. So I was left to believe that all these people going to hell and all that, plus, they started teaching me about ignorance because, you know, a lot of people were trying to teach me, oh, Islam is wrong. So they was teaching me about Christianity, but, you know, I wouldn't accept none of that. So and then that's when I realized I was being ignorant by believing in a God, and that's why I don't believe in one. But also, just yesterday, I'm listening to y'all's show, and at the same time, I'm playing Tetris. And it was funny because uh, the blocks form a perfect cross, and it was, it was just funny to me. <laughs> And on that note, we got to let you go because, shockingly, the show is over. Thanks for calling in. My apologies to the other people still waiting on the line. There's the crew list. Thanks to all you guys for all the work you do. And thanks, Jeff, for showing up and Thank helping you. out. Huh. I uh, we'll be back I'll, next I'll, week. I'll oh, improve. and because we raised over $30,000 for Camp Quest, I'll be doing a, a show in drag probably in July. So keep your eyes out for that. Bye-bye.